Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are continuing with a few conceptual videos on electrochemistry. Our target is to understand which kind of voltagram we should use for different case studies and how we can extract better information from a particular system. Today we will talk about the importance of current or understanding different kinds of current in cyclic voltagram. We already talked about two processes which are faradic and non-faradic. Just to recap, in faradic process we have an actual reaction and that reaction is a heterogeneous reaction happening at the interface of electrode and electrolyte. When the reaction happens then actual exchange of electrons take place from the electrode to the electrolyte and that creates a current which we generally call faradic current. In non-faradic processes there is no actual exchange of electrons rather there is an accumulation of charge in general the electrode which we are inserting in electrolytic solution that contains certain charge based on the external potential we apply on the working electrode and say if it has a positive charge then it will accumulate negative ions nearer to the electrode and it will form a distribution of co-ions and counter ions and thereby it forms a local capacitor which we sometimes call EDL capacitor, electrical double layer capacitor and that contributes to non-faradic current or charging discharging current. We will talk more about what charging and discharging current is and where from it originates but today's point of discussion is how to understand different kinds of current like in this particular cyclic voltagram this particular portion which is horizontal in nature that is the current value coming from the non-faradic nature or capacitive nature. But if we see this particular part you can see there is a gradual or sudden rise in current and this kind of sudden rise in current happens due to faradic reaction the, as quick reaction goes on near the electrode surface it originates or consumes a lot of electron with a shorter time span and that gives rise to a high a higher current value in in response and that is known as faradic current now coming to analyzing a system say we are working with biosensors and we want to understand how we want to quantify the concentration of a particular analyte in a biosensor in those kind of studies we generally prepare a working electrode and we try to incorporate a particular chemistry to capture a targeted analyte. In those cases, the electrode which we prepare, that electrode may have some capacitive nature and it may also have certain reaction with the solution because in your solution there are, might be multiple components. It's not like that the electrode is only reacting with the targeted analyte, it may react with a interfering agent and we have to consider those effects while we want to quantify a certain analyte concentration accurately. In those cases what we need to do we need to nullify the background current and how exactly background current is nullified that is what we have taken in uh, two examples in this particular lecture. So here you can see the bottom one in the picture A. The bottom one is the background current or current which is obtained from a blank sample. Blank sample means the analyte is not present. Now while you put analyte it may give a different faradic or non-faradic nature. Now if we can subtract the background current uh, from the original one then we can get actual thing which is happening due to the interaction between the working electrode and the targeted analyte and that is a better way of obtaining or quantifying uh, the analyte. So we have given two examples here you can see in both the cases uh, the background current is shown uh, along with that current in the presence of the targeted analyte is also shown. Another example is taken for the quantification of dopamine. So in uh, one thing we should talk about we should know while we talk about dopamine, dopamine quantification basically dopamine uh, is present in very minute amount in human, uh, human samples and while dopamine uh, gives some impression in electrochemistry then that impression is very uh, less in quantity that means it gives rise to 
very less amount of current may be in the range of nano ampere or most hardly in the range of micro ampere mostly it remains in the range of nano ampere and that is why if we have a background current which is falling in the range of micro ampere so we may lose the information in uh, in uh, micro ampere range and that is why it is very much necessary to remove the background current so here we have given the example the black curve is the current while there is no dopamine in the solution so here we are not talking about which chemistry is imparted on the working electrode to have a one to one or specific lock and key interaction with the dopamine but there is certain chemistry which is actually attracting the dopamine selectively and giving rise to some faradic current so we are talking about the amount of current which is meager in nature in the range of uh, nano ampere so the black one you can see it is giving a current which has value more than 1000 nano ampere that means the current of the background is more than 1 micro ampere now if we look at the red curve so it is giving certain faradic nature at this particular zone and that is happening due to the presence of dopamine but you can see the this particular increment is in the range of nano ampere say hardly or less than even 500 nano ampere so maybe if we don't subtract the background current we there is a chance we may miss this particular peak because uh, for this particular case we got an increment of 400 to 500 nano ampere because the dopamine concentration might be very high but if the dopamine concentration is very low there might be an increment of say 50 to if a 50 nano ampere or even less than that so in order to quantify that change we need to or we need always um, subtraction of this background current and that is what is done in most of the cases we cited two specific examples from two research papers there are multiple such examples and that is a good practice to have your to analyze your electrochemical data to get the normalized current for having better information about the system another example is taken here so here uh, what we are doing we are increasing the concentration and as you can see with the increment of the analyte concentration the the faradic peak uh, the intensity of the faradic peak is increasing and from this incremented value we can actually prepare the calibration plot which is shown in the plot b and again when we prepare the calibration if we get rid of the background current uh, which is for 0 0 you can see here in the legend we have written 0 0 uh, fg uh, if we can subtract this particular background current we get a better calibration curve now coming to uh, the capacitive nature for non-faradic system so when we do cyclic voltammetry for non-faradic system so as we, i have already mentioned in uh, cyclic voltammetry we put a triangular wave where generally the wave uh, starts from a negative value it crosses zero volt potential reaches a maximum positive potential and again from the positive potential it comes down so this is how the nature is this is the triangular wave so while uh, if we just imagine the what is happening on the electrode while we are putting a positive potential onto the electrode it is trying to become a positively charged surface nothing else so when the surface is positively charged it attracts the negative ions nearer to the electrode and in the opposite cycle i mean other half of the cycle uh, where it is ramping down in that case uh, the charge may become negative which is shown in the third um, diagram so uh, you can see it is coming down just crosses the zero volt so then it is going towards the negative potential the, now the charge is negative on the electrode in this case it attracts the positive ion so you can understand during the cyclic voltagram the polarity of the electrode is also changing so nature of ionic distribution around this electrode which we may term as charging or discharging cycle that is changing and that actually contributes to the change in capacitive current now if we have a faradic system we cannot exclude the possibility of having this ideal formation that means 
we had no there is no uh, physical example which is purely faradic which does not have any non faradic nature so we'll have faradic nature and non faradic nature in any kind of faradic system and that is why understanding of charging discharging current is important and again uh, removal of this particular component from the system may also be useful if you want to get the information about exact or pure faradic system and that is why uh, it is very important and the most uh, most important point here is sometimes what happens due to this charging and discharging we get uh, inaccurate information in our cyclic voltagram plots so say uh, you are operating in a particular scan rate and during this time scale the charging and discharging is not complete the system is not reached at equilibrium state and you are quickly moving to a uh, to to another potential so that actually disturbs the system and you get a distorted kind of cyclic voltagram plot and if this happens that may give you uh, erroneous or wrong information about the system that is why knowing about the system how it is getting charged or discharged how the capacitive nature of the electrode is is important to analyze the system better most importantly for those system which is giving a mega change in current value as an example we have taken the case of dopamine so in those cases generally we don't go for cyclic voltammetry we go for other kind of voltagrams like uh, differential pulse voltammetry square wave voltammetry or normal pulse voltammetry so in those cases this kind of charging and discharging effect can be nullified and how it can be nullified that we will discuss in the upcoming videos we will also discuss those charging discharging kinetics what is happening around the electrode how the diffusivity of the components contributing to the fact uh, what are the different kinds of resistances which are getting offered in uh, near the electrode so all those uh, information will be discussed in 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 further detail uh, for better understanding of these three kinds of voltagrams and then we'll do a comparative analysis between this uh, among these three those are dpv swv and npv so we have given a quick glimpse of those three voltagrams that is dpv swv and npv in upcoming videos we'll talk more about them so today we stop here if you like our video uh, kindly share those video and subscribe to our channel